Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I have a lot of announcements, so I'm going to try to make this very quick. The first announcement is 600,000 subscribers. The last video, I was freaking out about 500,000. As of filming this video, we are at 622,000 subscribers. And honestly, thank you guys. Thank you to all the newcomers that are coming from Critical's channel. First of all, Charlie. Thank you so much. I know I told you thank you in DMs. And by the way, guys, the fact that I talked, I, that I spoke to Critical, like, you know, it's literally a dream come true. I sound like a broken record, but I feel like I'm saying something I would like to repeat. So thank you to all the newcomers. Also, there was no like cinematic intro for this video because the channel intro editor known as Charge is actually, uh, he's actually editing the music video that's going to be out soon. That's right. Cherry Soda, my first hyperpop single, which I'm sure all of you guys are going to like, even if you don't listen to hyperpop, I'm sure you're all going to like it. That's how confident I am. We do not have an official release date, but the video will premiere here on my channel live. Yes, I'll be in the chat. I'm literally going to ping everyone on the discord and you guys should have post notifications turned on. So it's going to be a live event. I'm thinking 6 p.m. PST. So convert that over to whatever your time zone you're in. Um, you're in. <laughs> but seriously, it's going to come out in February for sure. So just keep your eyes open on that. It might be on the channel already, just like for the countdown thing. Hey guys, I want to let you guys know that I actually did an interview with Mock Nix, And it's so extremely funny. I love this interview. And it's my first interview ever. So if you guys want to get to know me, make sure to check it out in the link in the description. And here's a little preview of what the interview looks like. Tough. Yeah. 500,000 subscribers. Thank That's you. insane. Guys, Mocknix is pushing P. Turn off that fucking sign. All girls hit me up. Hit me the f up. I'm in my room all day. You could be right there. So, Reddit's darkest corners. In this video, we will be covering specific subreddits and users that can be described as strange, disturbing, odd. And I know what you guys are thinking. Dude, all of Reddit is like disgusting. What are you talking about? I know it is. I know. I know it is. But uh, let's just go even deeper than the surface. This video will be a little bit different because I asked you guys over on my community tab to help me out on certain topics. I want to give a big shout out to Juno over on the Tub Discord for helping me out with this idea. Juno gave me the idea. That's what I'm trying to say. If you guys have video ideas that you want me to cover, make sure to go leave it in the video ideas channel over on the discord i'm not gonna lie literally like nine out of ten of them are horrible I, I go on that channel dude i remember someone someone requested me to talk about harry styles like what do you want me to say the dark side of harry styles like no no also so i don't forget here is my official subreddit people say my intros are long okay if they're long literally skip to where the video starts that's why i leave chapters in my videos okay so <laughs> skip i don't care anyway let's get started with the video r slash jizzy carts 937 members oh boy we're starting off strong with this one okay r slash jizzy carts if you had to take a guess of what that even meant go ahead take a guess i'm certain you wouldn't have guessed men ejaculating onto video game cartridges and discs for fun. <laughs> yeah, pretty wholesome. There's only 15 posts and the subreddit was created in 2012. The most recent image was posted three years ago. It's safe to say that this subreddit is dead. The images consisted of three different accounts, but who's to say it wasn't just one person with two other alt accounts. The comments mainly consist of people questioning the existence of the subreddit and, uh, requests? The main user posting these images goes by ISVP7. And by clicking on this account, we can see he's still active. By the way, just by browsing this account, I got like five other strange subreddits that are in this video. So shout out to ISVP7. <laughs> User snapped fingers. All credit to Eudoxia Mysteries video on this. He made a 25 minute detailed video. So please subscribe to him. He's almost at 100,000 subscribers. And honestly, he deserves a lot more. So make sure to subscribe to Eudoxia Mysteries. Anyway, this is a case of a missing or dead Redditor. I obviously can't cover everything in this video because I'm covering these things in a very broad manner just because it's a list video. This story begins with the user claiming that they can see things that aren't actually there, like paranormal things, and that they were told by experts on Discord that they have to make a sacrifice, a significant part of themselves, in order for the interdimensional beings to leave them alone. Discord experts? Like... <laughs> That's already a red flag. The things they described as seeing were dark figures of humans, adults, and children, spiders, snakes, and more. They also explained that they are against medication and refuse to see a doctor. This story is very similar to that of Worthless319, which we already covered on the channel, so make sure to watch that after this video. Eventually, Snapped Fingers questions the reality of there being a hell portal in the Paris Catacombs and explains that they're booking a flight to put an end to this. What are the Paris Catacombs, though? During the Gallo-Roman period, many cemeteries within the city limits had become filled to over 
overflowing, resulting in unsanitary and unpleasant living conditions. The problem grew so much that by 1786, these cemeteries were being emptied for reasons of public safety. With the remains of about 6 million bodies requiring to be reburied, the only location with sufficient room to hold them were all the former mine tunnels 20 meters beneath the city. Thus, the former limestone mines of Paris became a space referred to as the catacombs. So yeah, it's a very creepy place which you can actually go visit. Some of it is open to the public. You just gotta pay. So back to Snapped Fingers. Their last post on the account, which was two years ago, reads, We'll be entering the catacombs in a few hours-ish, with another comment under it reading, Also, I am very fast. I used to run track back when I was in junior high school. I can likely outrun any possessed people. I am excited to finally close this chapter of my life and shut that blasted portal off for good. Now, personally, I do think this person was suffering from schizophrenia. Or, I could be completely wrong, this could be someone just looking for attention. The thing with these Redditor stories that we talk about on the channel is that we don't know. We don't really know. There is going to be one on the list where we do get an update, but for the most part, these are people that just never signed back into the account. r slash coming on figurines. 35.9 thousand members. I mean, pretty self-explainable. It's always been a thing to nut on figurines. <laughs> I can't even say that one. Wow. It's always been a thing to nut on figurines, especially in jars. Shout out to that My Little Pony. <laughs> Shout out to the My Little Pony jar. No idea why. But something interesting I found about this subreddit is that the owner has a Patreon where you can enter for, quote, figurine giveaways. Yeah, there's 28 patrons paying monthly to get exclusive pictures and videos of a man nutting on anime fig figurines. Yeah, uh, uh, wow. Honestly, I just want to get all through through some of these disgusting ones pretty quick. Uh, let's head on over to the next one. R slash inbreeding, 25.5 thousand members. When just fucking your family isn't enough. Their description reads, subreddit for posts about adult inbreeding, real or fantasy, porn or stories, AMA questions and answers. If it's inbreeding related, post it here. Personal experiences are encouraged and supported. The post consists of a lot of people's stories and honestly, I can't tell if they're real or just fantasy. When loading up the subreddit, we can see that this community is quarantined. When a subreddit is quarantined, it means that it's dedicated to shocking or highly offensive content and you must be logged in in order to access it. So basically like a shadow ban. And here's a strange comment I found. Well, the whole subreddit is more than strange, but again, I don't know if these people are telling the truth or just having some crazy fantasy roleplay. Congrats, that's awesome. My mom and I are currently both pregnant with my dad's babies and that's awesome. Here's another comment that I found and it comes from the perspective of a daughter that's dating her father. My current status is mostly a girlfriend but he still sees me as a daughter often. I'll get scolded if I'm not careful enough and sometimes that's a turn off for me, lol. Rarely he uses the phrase, because I'm your father Christy, and we end up fighting. Fortunately for me, he's very sweet and caring and he knows me very well and he even hates the thought of hurting me so he always makes up with me the same day r slash cum tagging 2000 members yeah this was just the guys uh splurging on objects men splurging on objects i mean that's it there's there's nothing more to explain to that we have public trash cans airport toilet paper holders campus bathrooms and dorms yeah we're just uh continuing the list of wholesome subreddits on this list ew that's so gross women hating subreddits it's not women women hating the subreddits but it's women hate men that hate women i found a lot of subreddits that are now archived they don't they don't exist anymore right but uh, we have r slash beating women we have r slash r wording women we have r slash i hate women we have r slash just r word um i'm not gonna go through what i mean you guys can imagine it was just guys i hate women or i hate them i want to do this to them i want to r word like uh. i found an archive of the r wording women one i mean just look at the suggestions that's enough to tell you like reddit was a crazy place back then it still is but it was just a lot less monitored <laughs> r slash ibletch 228,000 members ibletch is one of the more popular ones on this subreddit especially if you're into gore and just disturbing things in general i wouldn't use the word mainstream because we're going to talk about another subreddit that has like millions of members but um definitely uh more popular it's ironic that this is one of the more popular ones because uh you can argue it has the worst stuff imaginable r slash ibletch became one of the main subreddits to visit for gore especially when r slash gore and r slash watch people die were banned by reddit why isn't this one taken down according to some users this subreddit is completely banned in some countries however i do not know which ones yeah i have nothing more to add to this i don't know what else to say about it it's uh it's pretty gross though so you know a little warning if you guys want to head over there r slash sink pissers gone wild 1.2 thousand members we fuck shit up this community is for the dedicated sink pissers who want to take their game to the next level created in 2019 this is a subreddit dedicated to people 
peeing in, in sinks. I think asking why is pointless at this point. We're talking about Reddit. Peeing in your sink, weird, but okay. I mean, you're not harming anyone, right? But these people go out of their way to sometimes pee in, in public sinks or, or their friends' bathrooms. Yeah, it's a thing to walk into your local retail store or a neighbor's house, a friend's house, walk into the bathroom and record yourself peeing in their sink hoping that no one walks in with captions like fuck it not my sink cleaning out the neighbor's sink and always better in a public sink i think it's safe to say that the members of this server are not in the right headspace and i'm sure some of them are gonna watch this my videos get very popular now and if i'm offending any of you i'm sorry i don't want any of you to fucking pull up to my house and start peeing in my sink please that's the least of what i want it's not like i have a piss kink or anything i don't <laughs> I mean, imagine going to a friend's house and then thinking, oh boy, I can't wait to take a piss in their sink and record it for Reddit. Guys, just a quick reminder, if you guys are enjoying the video so far, make sure to leave a like. And if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe. User Condor underscore salesman. An extremely sad story of a Redditor's last words. His account has since been deleted, but I'll be using screenshots that I found from a YouTube video. So all my sources will be linked down in the description. This user would make extremely depressing posts on multiple subreddits. I'll read some so you guys get the idea of what this person was battling. I'm just struggling to understand the meaning behind enjoying life. If it's just gonna end at some point, either abruptly with no warning young or slowly and humiliatingly with old age. What is a hug supposed to feel like? I'm genuinely considering just for the small chance that it will allow me to start life over. Further on, he goes to explain that he has a facial deformity due to his mother smoking while he was in her stomach, so while she was pregnant. He describes regretting pursuing engineering and is really going to go through with taking his own life. Then we get this post. I lose. I am 25 years old. I have a degree. I have been actively searching for a job for half a year now, getting absolutely nowhere. I am a virgin despite efforts to not be one. I am poor. I live in the cheapest student dormitory in the city. All my flatmates are filthy and I don't feel comfortable in my own home. I may get kicked out any day at short notice once they discover I am not a student anymore. I have no friends. My family has excommunicated me. I am born with a malformed face. This isn't exaggeration or drama. My medical records describe me as malformed. I am objectively hideous and will never be looked at with affection. I am a loser. I lose. I lose at life. I don't have the will to eat anymore. I, I don't deserve it. And after that, we get these series of posts. In 46 days, I will commit. This goes on until he eventually reaches the last day. It reads, As of this post, I am dead. My final words. I've set up an auto hotkey script to hit post on this message in one hour. I am posting my last words here instead of r slash watch since they have shadow banned me which is hilarious almost two months ago i made the decision that i do not want to live life anymore i gave myself the time frame to allow for a small miracle to change my mind but in the days that i've gone by it has only deepened my conviction i'm not going to read the entire post it is very long i'm going to skip to the final paragraph my name was david today i turned 25 years old i was born in a small town where i grew up and had no friends i moved to a big city to study engineering i graduated i could not find a job i never had a girlfriend my family has forgotten me. I achieved nothing. I will not be remembered. This was my story. It has now ended. So yeah, very, very, very sad story. Um, I, I feel like this one was real. I mean, there's no proof it was real or fake. I Again, with Reddit, we don't really know. If any of you guys are going through anything, talking about depression, maybe you want to make a bad decision, make sure to call this number right here. I will leave links in the description where you can go and get some help. Yeah, honestly, um, rest in peace to David r slash oh come on 63.1 thousand members 63.1 thousand that's actually a lot there's a lot of humans that have joined this subreddit they describe themselves as a place to challenge others to come in unusual places ways and circumstances you know what i'm not gonna describe any i'm gonna describe one sorry guys this one is it's it's called the oreo video this is something that is gonna be stuck in my brain forever and it's even hard to repeat what happened but i'm gonna do it for you guys one because it's funny <laughs> two that's it it's just funny so there's this video where this guy i'm gonna use the word splurge okay i'm not gonna yeah so this guy you know oreo got the white stuff in the middle right this guy like takes off the the cream right and then splurges where the cream should be puts the fucking oreo on top you know makes the cookie again with the splurge like leaking out and shit and fucking eats it on video dude well he doesn't eat it on video but like you could tell he's munching on it right it's just like and I already know some of you guys are going to look it up. Bro, if you guys watch my channel, I know you guys are going to go look it up. At least give me the watch time. Like always, give me the watch time and then go give yourself a little bit of trauma. That, that one's called the Oreo video. Not officially named that, but I'm naming it the Oreo video. 
This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Feeling your best starts with looking your best, which is why my friends over at Manscaped are hooking you up with all the tools and formulations designed specifically for men. There's a lot to fall in love with at Manscaped.com, including the Performance Package 4.0. Let's check it out. My personal favorite product in the kit is the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. This is great for beard maintenance, but this trimmer is specifically designed with the advanced skin safe technology, which helps reduce nicks and cuts on the most sensitive parts of your body. It's cordless and waterproof, so you can trim in the shower too, which is super convenient and makes for easy cleanup. It has up to 90 minutes of use with full charge. Also included in the Performance Package 4.0 kit are two products I never knew I needed until now. We have the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. Trust me, your balls are gonna thank you, bro. And the Performance Package 4.0 also includes the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer. The Weed Whacker has these 360 degree rotary blades and the same skin safe technology from the body trimmer. And for limited time, when you get the Performance Package 4.0 kit, you get not one, but two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag, and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Head over to manscaped.com to get 20% off plus free international shipping, plus the two free gifts when you use promo code TUV at checkout. So like I said, this video is brought to you by Manscaped, the perfect tools for your family jewels. Now let's head back to the video. R slash just no M-I-L. 1.8 million members. M-I-L means mother-in-law. This subreddit is dedicated to people venting about their horrible mothers and mother-in-laws. I'm gonna read you guys a story that pissed me off and I'm sure will enrage any normal human being. When my twin girls were born, we had no issues in the hospital. They were born right on their due date, latched perfectly, and passed all their postnatal tests with stellar stats. When we brought them home, however, we noticed that one of the girls, let's call her OD, since she was a whole 4.5 minutes older than her sister, was developing a rash. I hadn't really dealt with allergies in kids since my son didn't have them, and neither did any child or adult in my entire family. I wasn't sure what it was. I thought that maybe she just had sensitive skin like me. I can't tolerate certain fabrics because I have very dry skin, and I'll often break out in rashes and my skin decides that it doesn't like something. So I stopped using fabric softener on all the clothes. I bought the nicest, most comfortable bedding and clothes. At one point, I even made her clothes myself in the fear that maybe something in the manufacturing process was upsetting my OD. We went to the doctor several times and they knew that she was having an allergic reaction to something. But every test came back negative and we couldn't figure out what it was. It took three more months to figure it out. During that time, her allergic reactions got more and more severe. At one point, she was the only baby in the history of the hospital who had to be kept in a clean room because she seemed to have a reaction the minute she left. When that happened, we began to have elimination therapy that would rival the lifestyle of the Buddhist monks. My husband and I moved our son and YD in with his parents because we needed to eliminate everything from our routine to figure out what was causing the reaction to our OD. We stopped using our soap, our shampoo, our deodorants, our laundry detergents, and that was before we even got to our diet. It took us three more months, but we figured it out. Our OD was allergic to coconut. The doctors told us that it was a particularly rare allergen, and so it wasn't on any of the skin test panels they ran. When we found out what she was allergic to, we were so relieved, so, so relieved. But in addition to feeling relieved, I delved into a bot of hysterical laughter. I laughed so hard I cried, and to this day, my DH tells me that he didn't know if I was crying from relief or pure happiness. Okay, so like I said, this story is very long, but to summarize it, the baby has an allergic reaction to coconut oil, and now we're being introduced to the mother, right? The mother of the woman. And this mother basically isn't taking the allergy serious. She's just like, yeah, it's just coconut, bro. Like, what, what's gonna happen? So let's skip to uh, where the grandmother is taking care of the baby. My mother had put coconut oil in both my daughter's hairs when they were playing the previous day before bed. The girls loved it when my mom did their hair, and so they asked for braids, and my mom was doing their hair. She put coconut oil in both their hair because it would make for smoother braids. According to my son, OD started to get a little dizzy and itchy when my mom was doing her hair, so my mom gave her some kids Benadryl, which made her sleepy. Since it was close to bedtime anyways, the kids went to bed. Giving her Benadryl was something we did whenever she had a mild reaction, since it usually meant she accidentally came across some coconut from a secondary source. We also showered her head to toe immediately to erase any lingering traces of it. My mother simply gave her some Benadryl and kept the coconut oil in her hair and put her to fucking sleep. The Benadryl made her sleepy and unable to wake up or be conscious enough to wake up her brother or cry. She vomited in her sleep and the rash spread all over. Her little body was swollen to twice the size. She had asphyxiated in her sleep. She died painfully and slowly in the early hours of the morning. My mother was never arrested. My father did leave her, though they're not officially divorced, 
The majority of my mother's family refuse to speak to her, and the few that do speak to her only do so on a limited basis. She currently lives on her own in a small town, and every couple months I'll get a call from her telling me how sorry she is, and how she just wasn't thinking, and can I please find a way to forgive her. She wants to come see me. The only thing I can find to ever say to her is, you can come see me when you bring my daughter with you. If you guys want to go read it on your own, it's a lot longer than what I just said, and I know what I said was pretty long, but uh... Horrible, horrible, that sucks, oh my god, literally, ignorance, bro, that's what, that's what ignorance does, man, let's move on. R slash jailbait. The Urban Dictionary definition for jailbait is a female who is under the age of consent, but who dresses, acts, and appears as if she is over the age of consent, and who does nothing to correct that impression when she is bedded. Yeah, when I read that, I was like, whoa, what kind of victim blaming, dude, why are you getting mad at them? Like, nah, I don't want to get off track, but it's just weird when guys are like, yo, you shouldn't dress like that too young it's not even your life just fucking move on go on reddit actually that's what that's what they were doing it was just a place where creeps would talk about underage girls at the time eric martin reddit's general manager defended several notorious subreddits including jailbait by claiming that it was one of the side effects of promoting free expression on the web reddit administrators took down the subreddit after a user shared a picture of an underage teenager saying that he had nude photos of her as well and many users were requesting you know send me send me send me yeah it's just pretty disgusting stuff User Spontaneous H. This is the story of a Redditor who documented himself injecting heroin. I'll read the main posts. I did heroin yesterday. I am not a drug user and have never done anything besides pot back when I was a teen. Ask me anything. This is a little long. I've never been a drug user. I drink once in a while and smoked pot years ago back when I was a teen in high school a few times and that's it. I'm 24 now, have a master's and a well-paying full-time job. Yesterday, I was walking through Washington Square Park where I pass every day and there are always people looking to sell drugs. Not in the park anymore due to the cameras, but it is well known you can meet a dealer and do the transaction elsewhere these days. They usually don't solicit drugs to you unless you stop to stand around near one of them for some reason or look like you're looking for something. Yesterday, I happened to stop by a row of benches to check some messages on my phone when a dealer on the bench to my right asked me if I need anything. My life has been pretty boring the last few years and I felt like I haven't really lived, taken any risks, or done anything crazy so i figured what the hell maybe i'll buy some pot it's been a while i said yeah and after asking me several times if i'm a cop he gives me his number and tells me to meet him at a fast food place several blocks away and he will quote hook me up i was blown away by the power of this drug and how orgasmic it felt i never understood why people did drugs before and got so hooked on them but now i see why i have the urge to do it again but i will resist and not do it at least not for a long time i understand the addiction potential and how someone could easily tear apart their lives with this stuff heroin is pure power pleasure. I actually feel proud of myself for having the balls to do something this crazy and I feel like it was a valuable life experience and my window into another world and part of society. I'll never forget the day I did heroin. Now, ask me anything. Two weeks ago, I tried heroin once for fun and made an AMA. I have been using since and shot up for the first time today. AMA. Wednesday night update. Fucking, I'm still withdrawing, throwing up, and sweating out gallons of sweat. I really want to use and relapse right now. I know I shouldn't. These urges are so strong and overpowering. Please help me if you can before I get the chance to. Fuck my life. I wish I was trolling and this was some elaborate lie. I was doing everything right, have been clean, and somehow a rumor got out that I've been using and my girlfriend found out. She basically broke up with me last night, but is now putting that decision on hold. I have some serious unrelated business slash work I need to attend to in two hours, and I don't know if I'll be in any state to be able to be ready. I can't stop crying. Fuck heroin. Fuck my life. I guess I don't need to say that since heroin pretty much fucked my life for me in under two weeks. I just want to die. I am a patient in a psychiatric hospital. I was also technically dead last week. Ask me anything. Well, you guys will be happy to know that this person is actually still alive. Even though this all happened about 12 years ago, this user actually came back four months ago with an update. It's been a while. This is not an AMA or anything exciting, really. I saw a disturbing and sad post about an opiate overdose on Public Freakout and was reminded to try to log in and check this. I guess it's been over three years since I checked this or posted anything. I find this Reddit account pretty overwhelming. I'm just posting to let people know that I'm still alive, clean, and doing well. Thanks to everyone who reached out in messages checking in over the past few years, and sorry if I can't get back to you. Here's another comment with more details where he responded to another user. It has been coming up on almost 11 years since I have used heroin, any hard drugs, or alcohol. That was November 2010. A few years ago, I had a slip and just smoked weed, which is a bad mistake, so I consider my current total clean time three years since I count that. Nice. We actually had a happy ending to this one. Love that. Love that he's still okay and doing just fine. It's kind of a uh, crazy to just be like, hey, yo, let me just shoot up some heroin. Fuck it. My life kind of boring. Oh, should I document my experience doing that? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. 
All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Don't click off yet. Don't click off yet. I want to say something. In the community tab, when I was telling you guys um, to leave requests for video ideas, right? Or like Reddit ideas for this one. People were saying that I just like steal video idea topics and I just cover them in a mediocre way, which first of all, I know I don't. I know I have a personality, but I just want to make it clear that I've never steal video ideas. If anything, yes, I would be influenced. But for example, the Worthless 319 video, I clearly credit Eudoxia Mysteries. This video is inspired by Eudoxia Mysteries' video on the same topic. Make sure to subscribe to his channel. He makes great content also covering dark subjects. I also want to say that this video is heavily inspired by Blame It On George. His link is down in the description. Make sure to go subscribe to him. I love him. I look up to him as a creator. I want to give credit to Alex Gus for his video on the dark YouTube iceberg because because I did use his video as a blueprint and I also want to give credit to reddit user beanburger9 because that is the tier list that I'm going to be using and I always make sure to credit in the description I would never steal a video concept and just be like hey guys I'm the one that thought of this never you guys act like I made fucking icebergs I didn't make icebergs so it's just upsetting to me that people tell me your videos are just copy and paste of other it's like first of all it's so difficult in the horror genre to talk about shit that hasn't been spoken about already but if I make a video and let's say cartoon theories I give full credit to blame it on horror I give full credit to anyone I make a video based, you know, on their idea. And it's not like I don't give credit. Like, I, if anything, I would have beef with a bunch of people by now. So it just annoys me that, you know, that was a little complaint. Literally, every time I think of a video idea, I look it up and I check if people have done it. But there's a lot of stuff that people have already covered. This genre that I'm in, this morbid horror stuff, has been going on for years. I think I'm the youngest out of all the people making videos in the horror genre. But yeah, I want to make it super clear that I would never steal video ideas. That's so fucking dumb. And if I am influenced, literally always give full credit. Always. And I always tell you guys, go subscribe to that person. They made a better video about it. And again, that was like a little complaint, like a minuscule fucking 1% complaint that people would say. And I just wanted to mention it. A lot of people always tell me, you could talk about anything. And it's just the way you explain things. And thank you guys so much. That really, it gives me a lot of confidence because I think the way I explain things is a lot better than a lot of other YouTubers. That's not me being egotistical, but it's just me knowing that I need to grab your guys' attention. I don't want to be a robot that reads a script and forgets about you guys. I want to treat you guys like my friends and then reply to you guys in the comments and heart you guys' comments. And so if you guys have any video ideas, literally go to the Discord. Go, go over there. Go. I've been talking too much, and if I'm ever influenced, always give full credit. I just want to make that super duper clear. And if you don't like me, why the fuck are you watching this deep into the video? Leave. And I'll see you guys next time I upload.